हेलो एवरीवन आई होप ऑल ऑफ यू आर सेफ एंड हेल्दी एट होम आई एम मिस आकांक्षा संगदेव गुरुले आई हैव बीन वर्किंग एज एन असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन केमिस्ट्री एट के टी एच एम कॉलेज नासिक टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिलीवर अ वीडियो लेक्चर ऑन रिव्यू ऑफ थर्मोडायनेमिक विच इज अ पार्ट ऑफ अवर सिलेबस ऑफ फिजिकल केमिस्ट्री I am sure you are all ready to take my lecture. From the last academic year, the UGC and the university have jointly launched the CBCS pattern. That means choice based credit system. Apart from the prescribed syllabus, you will have to participate in various extracurricular activities. and on more and more points in this i am going to teach you physical chemistry subject the subject code is ch101 my subject is for 2 credit and for 36 lectures weightage of the course is 50 marks the 50 marks are further divided into 15 marks 35 marks So the 15 marks are for internal assessment, which will be continuous assessment. In continuous assessment, test and vivas will be taken. Assignments will be given to you, and according to overall report, the marks will be given to you. And the 35 marks examination will be conducted by Savitri Bai Phule, Pune University. now we will move towards the syllabus for physical chemistry so in this there are three chapters that is chemical energetics chemical equilibrium and ionic equilibrium so in chemical equilibrium we are going to discuss the basics of thermodynamics the laws of thermodynamics specially we are going to study third law of thermodynamics and its application we are also going to study kirchhoff's equation next is chemical equilibrium in chemical equilibrium we are going to study gibbs free energy endergonic reactions and exergonic reactions we are going to study van der waals equations law of mass action in the next chapter that is ionic equilibrium we are going to study different types of electrolytes degree of dissociation factors affecting degree of dissociation ionic product and solubility product ph scale sparingly soluble salts and many more things so first of all we will move towards our first chapter that is chemical equilibrium the learning outcomes of this lecture after listening to this lecture i am sure you will understand the concept which i have tried my best to explain them the concept are basics of thermodynamics types of ther types of system equilibrium types of properties thermodynamic processes so now we will start with our first lecture that is chemical energetics but moving towards the first lecture uh, first point that is chemical energetic we must know what is physical chemistry physical chemistry is the study of properties and changes of matter and their relation to energy speaking very basically study of physics involved with chemical changes is studied in physical chemistry our first chapter is chemical energetics so what do you mean by chemical energetics it is the study of chemical changes caused by energy now next is thermodynamics the word 
thermodynamic itself can be divided into two words that is thermo and dynamics thermo means heat and dynamic means motion that means it is the branch of science which deals with energy transfer and its effect on properties physical and chemical properties of the substance amount of heat being getting transfer from one form of energy or state to another form is the main concern in thermodynamics so next is importance of thermodynamics or what is the objective to learn thermodynamics first to predict the feasibility of a process that means by applying the principles of thermodynamics we can get information about whether the reaction is going to happen or whether it is not the next one is to estimate the yield of product that means how much product is being getting formed during the process can be deduced by applying the principles of thermodynamics the next is to deduce some important relationship the relationship such as raoult's law for lowering of vapor pressure expression for depression in freezing point expression for elevation in boiling point after the distribution law phase rule are deduced from thermodynamics the next is limitation of thermodynamics the first limitation of thermodynamic is it only talks about the macroscopic properties that means it only gives information of large number of atom or large number of particles ions or molecules it does not talks about individual atom molecule or particle the next limitation is it does not gives information about the time or rate of the reaction that means it predict the feasibility of process but it does not gives any information about how much time will be required for the particular reaction to get complete also it does not gives information about the rate of reaction the next one is it does not reveal the mechanism of reaction that means it does not gives any information about the way or the path that is followed by the particular chemical reaction the next is system and surrounding you are very very well known about system and surrounding the system is a part or mass or a region in a space where our study is focused surrounding everything external to the system is surrounding boundary the real or imaginary surface that separates the system and surrounding is called boundary the boundary may be fixed or it may be movable boundary so next that is types of system the first one is a open system the system in which both energy and mass transfer can take place between system and surrounding the example is piston cylinder arrangement in which cylinder is taken and above that cylinder piston is fixed with the wall at the bottom this means when piston moves up and down with some force the energy is being getted transfer and with the help of wall the mass can also be get transferred that means it is the example of open system next one is a closed system it is a type of system in which only energy can be transferred and not mass for the example of closed system is piston cylinder arrangement without wall if there is no wall there is no transfer of mass that means only energy get transferred 
So such system is called as a closed system. Next one is a isolated system. It is a type of system in which neither energy nor mass can be transferred. So the example of that is hot hot coffee or tea kept in the thermos flask. When hot object is hot liquid is kept in a thermos flask, its temperature never changes. That means there is no transfer of energy and no transfer of mass. But speaking very frankly, thermos flask is not an ideal isolated system because after some time the temperature of that liquid gets lowered. That means some amount of energy is being getter, transferred through the thermos flask. So from this image you can un understood where, what is open system, closed system or isolated system. So here is the cup and saucer filled with tea or coffee. The first that is a cup and saucer is filled with hot coffee or tea in which energy is also getting transferred and the mass is also getting transferred in the form of vapors. Now moving towards the closed system in which the cup is closed with the lid. So here only energy get transferred and not mass. And in this that is isolated system there is no transfer of energy neither the transfer of mass. So now we are going to see some basic terms that are used in thermodynamics such as homogeneous system and heterogeneous system. Homogeneous system, a system in which the chemical and physical composition is same in all parts of the system. So the example of homogeneous system is pure solid or pure liquid. A system in only one phase can also be said as a homogeneous system. Next is heterogeneous system. It consists of two or more homogeneous phases together. So the example is two or more immiscible liquids together or a system consisting of a liquid with its vapor. So the next term is state of a system and state variables. So the state of system. State of system means the condition of system assigned by various microscopic parameters. State variables. Macroscopic properties are known as state variables such as composition, pressure, volume, temperature are said to be microscopic properties or state variables. So what is microscopic properties? The properties related to the behavior of particles in macroscopic system is called as a microscopic properties. Next is equilibrium. We usually talks about equilibrium. But what is equilibrium? Equilibrium is a state of a system in which a process and its reverse are occurring at equal rates so that no overall change takes place. That means the rate of forward reaction is exactly equal to the rate of backward reaction. Therefore, there is no any change in the overall process, such state of a system is known as a equilibrium state. Now thermodynamic equilibrium. A system is said to be in a thermodynamic equilibrium if the macroscopic parameter of the system in various phases do not show any variation with time. So, Thermodynamic equilibria exist only and only if the following equilibria exist. So what are these following equilibria? 
these are thermal equilibrium chemical equilibrium and mechanical equilibrium so one by one we will see thermal equilibrium thermal equilibrium means equality of temperature this implies that there should not be flow of heat from one portion of the system to another the next one is a chemical equilibrium no change in chemical composition that means this equilibrium implies that no change in composition should occur in any part of the system with passage of time next is mechanical equilibrium that means equality in the forces which implies no work should be done by one part of the system over another one that means there should not be any force applied by one part to the another part in the system the next we are going to study types of property there are two types of property extensive property and intensive property extensive property is also known as extrinsic property the property which depends up upon the amount of matter contained in the system is known as extensive property so the example is mass volume energy that means the mass or volume or energy depends upon the amount of matter next one is intensive property also known as intrinsic property the property which does not depends on the amount of matter contained in the system the example is temperature pressure viscosity refractive index and density that means all these properties does not depends upon the amount of matter viscosity whether which is the viscosity of one 1 uh, ml of solution or for 1 liter of solution the viscosity for all of them will be same that means viscosity does not depends on the matter hence it is included in intensive properties so now we are going to see thermodynamic processes the first one is isothermal process it is the thermodynamic process in which the temperature remains constant next one is adiabatic process the process in which no heat is transferred from system to surrounding next one is isochoric process a process in which volume of the system remains constant such process is known as isochoric process next one is isobaric process a process in which pressure remains constant such process is known as isobaric process isothermal temperature remains constant adiabatic no heat is transferred isochoric volume is constant and isobaric pressure is constant so i hope whatever i have taught you in this lecture that you have understood thank you